もうな何者だと思ってんだお前イギリス行って仕事をするなって俺は言ったのに仕事をしてたろお前ロンドンの家にお前はいるということは絶対もうこれから許さない These threats were uttered by Kazuhide Nakano the chairman of Mizukan Holdings one of the largest food companies in Japan This man used to be my father-in-law My name is Daisuke Nakano. I'm currently in the middle of a legal battle with Chairman Nakano and his wife for taking my son and for their total infringement on my human rights. An unprecedented founding family feud. This case was taken up in the May 2019 issue of a major Japanese weekly magazine. This led to special coverage on two television news programs. For a time, the forced and corporately orchestrated separation of a father from his own son was the focus of national attention. But this coverage did not lead to a resolution of the problem. I hope that with this video, I can attract public interest in this matter. I hope to address the problem of the violation of my human rights and my separation from my son as carried out by Mitsukan and the Nakano family. In May 2013, at the age of 32, I married Seiko, Chairman Nakano's second daughter, and began working at Mizuka. At the time, Seiko was already a managing director and expected to head up the company in the future. Because the Nakanos had no son, and Seiko needed to keep the family name, at the request of the Nakano family, I took the family name as well. In Japan, a married couple must have the same family name. Our lives changed dramatically the following year, in September 2014. Seiko and I were living in London, working at Mizukan's office there. Our troubles began four days after we were blessed with a baby boy. Chairman Kazuhide Nakano and his wife Miwa. Who is vice chair of Mizukan Holdings showed up at the maternity clinic where we were staying in London. After taking a quick look at his first grandchild, Chairman Kazuhide presented us with an adoption form. He wanted to adopt our four day old son, who we hadn't even given a name to yet. The proposal was so sudden. That I asked to be given one night to think it over with Seiko, my wife. Enraged by this request, the chairman and the vice chairman began plotting, with the help of the company and its lawyers, to separate me from my son and push me out of their family. Now, as a result of their aberrant harassment, I've been discharged from my job at Mizuka and torn from my wife and son. Total annual sales for Mizuka Holdings are more than $2 billion. It is a global company with offices around the world. Its overseas brands include Branston and Sarsons in the UK and Ragu and Bertoli in the US. For the 215 years since its establishment, Mizkan has been operated continuously by the same family. The current chairman 
カズヒデ・ナカノ、is the eighth generation to head up the company. In keeping with family custom, the Nakano family's enormous wealth is transferred to one child to the next head of the company. Chairman Kazuhide and Vice Chairman Miwa have two daughters. The fact that they weren't blessed with a son to take over the company had become a major concern. The boy who was born to Seiko and me was a long awaited gift. By adopting him, they could ensure a smooth and direct transfer of the family's wealth and of the leadership of the company. The Nakanos wanted to dismiss me from the company and separate me from my wife and son. With the birth of a boy, I was no longer needed. When I hesitated to sign the form, Chairman Kazuhide was furious. He said, Sign this now, or I'll boot you back to Japan with a one way ticket to our distribution center. He was abusing his position as company chairman to intimidate me. He also said, I can disown Seiko and make her penniless. And the Japanese constitution has no clout with the Nakano family. The following morning, my wife received an email from her mother. The content was threatening. She wrote, If you don't follow our orders, you won't get by with a mere beating, and you must leave your husband, and that's not negotiable. Exposed to her parents' anger, Seiko pleaded with me to sign the adoption form, saying, If things continue like this, they'll force us to divorce. I couldn't understand where their anger was coming from. This anger that terrified their own daughter, who had just given birth to their first grandchild. In response to my wife's entreaties, that same day, I signed the adoption form and handed it over to the Nakanos. Taking the form, Vice Chairman Miwa said, I pity any child raised by you. You are destroying everything Seiko has worked for. One week later, Chairman Kazuhide's henchman, Mitsukan's President Hasegawa, and Managing Director Kojima, Came to London. They brought a message from the chairman. He wanted me to resign from the company within three months and find a new job. Chairman Kazuhide had compelled me to sign the adoption form and was now demanding my resignation. The process of expelling me was underway. They pulled out the adoption form and handed me a pen and told me to sign it. And they had already、uh, filled out everything. You just need our signatures. When I asked for time to think, think it over, they became extremely angry. Seiko apologized to them and said, I sign it right away. So please forgive us. That was the first time I saw how much power they had over my wife. She was terrified. At all costs, she didn't want to anger them. The two of us were living in London as commanded by the Nakano family. The Nakano family has enormous wealth. Their biggest problem when they pass this on from one generation to The next generation is taxes, inheritance tax, and gift tax. If this isn't done well, it will deplete family fortunes. The Nakanos came up with a scheme to move their assets overseas for 10 years. If the bequeather and the inheritor are both overseas for 10 years, 
they won't be liable for these taxes. The Nakanos told us to go to London when my wife became pregnant, right after we all found out it was a boy. On December 15, 2014, I met with Mizukan Holdings Chairman Kazuhide, President Hasegawa, and Managing Director Kojima to discuss the situation. My only interest was the protection of my family, and I was prepared to bow down to them if that would make this possible. To keep an accurate record of what transpired, I decided to record our conversation. これ以上成功の足を引っ張る I also recorded a meeting with Chairman Kazuhide, his wife Miwa, my wife, and managing director Kojima that took place in the study at my home in London four days later. I had been told to wait. In another room. さすがないですね。いや、なんかあるかな。どういうふうにするのか会社側として。しくしくとすることだけなんでしょう。今回のことをおっしゃるのは、まあ、韓国というような形にするのは、まあ、そうですね。そうすると今この、あれは、こっち
I first met Seiko Nakano in 2012 when I was working for a Swiss bank in Hong Kong. My boss introduced us. When Kazuhide, Miwa, and Seiko came to Hong Kong, I was immediately attracted to Seiko. We had a lot in common, and I felt that she was trustworthy and of good character. During the time prior to our marriage in May 2013, we promised to be honest with each other and create a warm family together. We dated for a year、uh, before we got married. We had a long distance relationship. We emailed almost every day and we met once a month in Hong Kong or Tokyo. I was told that if I wanted to marry Seiko, I had to take her family name, give up my career in banking, and join Mitsuka. At the time, Seiko was already a managing director. And I expected to head up the company in the future. I was ready to do anything I could to support Seiko. It was with that intention I made the commitment to marry her. On our wedding day, I also signed an agreement that I would not inherit any part of the family's wealth. Starting around the time that Seiko became pregnant, and we found out it was a boy. It felt like Vice Chairman Miwa had begun to harbor hostile feelings toward me. One example when I was in high school, I played rugby at a high level, and my team came in third in a national athletic meet. Vice Chairman Miwa decided that this was all a lie and said as much to Chairman Kazuhide. She even made President Hasegawa. Pay a visit to my former high school coach to confirm the facts. I was unable to understand these actions, but Seiko thought her mother's behavior probably stemmed from hardships she had endured when she married into the Nakano family. Because I had prevented the adoption from occurring, the Nakanos then set out to have Seiko and me divorce and to gain custody of their grandson. Their plan to separate me from my son was devised with the help of Mitsukan's legal counsel. These minutes from meetings in February and March of 2015 are evidence that advice was given to Mitsukan and the Nakano family by the law offices of Mori, Hamada, and Matsumoto towards planning for my expulsion. Here, managing director Kojima. Is reporting on the legal counsel's advice. It is risky to suggest and push for a divorce when they are still living together. We must find a way to separate them. Have the company move Daisuke back to Japan. From now on, Kazuhide and Miwa should avoid direct communication with Daisuke. Even after a separation or a divorce, his visa won't be revoked immediately. We must think about this strategically. This law office, reputed to be one of the top five in Japan, arranged for the voiding of my visa to live in the UK and provided advice regarding how to separate me from my wife and son. They also suggested, practically speaking, A transfer will not occur during paternity leave. It is vital that the company assert the need for a transfer. If the company's justifications are unreasonable, they will be voided. Knowing my transfer back to Japan was unjustifiable, legal counsel made suggestions how to transfer me while concealing the family's motives. Following the scenario described in these minutes, they proceeded with the plan to banish me. And Chairman Kazuhide put pressure on Seiko to ostracize me. Well, 
ってほしいということは私は言う。In this way, by compelling Seiko to divorce me, the chairman could banish me without getting his hands dirty. Seiko then suggested that we get a divorce. I think this feigned obedience to her parents was her last resort. She believed that even without marital status, the three of us could stay together as a family. When her parents began to present divorce as the only option, Seiko's way of thinking changed. She had been backed into a corner and felt that she had no other choice. I think she wanted to protect me. By choosing divorce, she pretended to follow her parents' orders. But in reality, we continued to communicate as a family. And it was Seiko's idea to create a private blog. The title of the blog was Secret Family. Whatever happened, we would keep a record of the truth. So, our son would know that he was loved by his parents, and we would show it to him in the future. As planned by the management of Mizukan, I was transferred to the Osaka Distribution Center in October 2015. During the time prior to my transfer to Osaka, Seiko and I were ordered to live separately in London. While fearing her parents, she secretly welcomed me into her home, making time for the three of us to be together. Caught between me and her parents, Seiko was in a state of anguish, and for her sake, I looked for a way to resolve the situation. Those secret meetings were the last moments of happiness the three of us would share as a family. And it was only once that we were able to celebrate our son's birthday together. On October 13, 2015, 13 months after my son was born, the company ordered my transfer to Mitsugan's distribution center in Osaka. I've come to realize that this problem is not mine alone, it's a problem Japanese society faces as a whole. Speaking up about my son, I've had the opportunity to meet others who share s this problem. For example, Takanori Hashimoto, a famous Japanese shogi player, has recently spoken out about being separated from his son. And this is not a problem for fathers alone. There are also many cases of Japanese mothers who have been separated from their children. Japan is a member of the Convention on the Rights of the Child, which states that children must not be forcibly separated from their parents. Although Japan has ratified this convention, even when children are irrationally separated from their parents, Japanese law doesn't protect them. In 2020, the EU Parliament strongly criticized Japan for its lack of meaningful action on child abduction cases. That are clear violations of international law. When one parent takes a child and refuses an audience with the other parent, this would normally be defined as kidnapping. This is quite similar to my situation. Wanting to adopt their grandchild, Kazuhide and Miwa did everything in their personal and corporate power to separate me from my son. They essentially kidnapped their own grandson. Objecting to my nonsensical transfer to Osaka, I filed an injunction with the Nagoya District Court. The following year, in March 2016, I won the case and my transfer was invalidated. Just when I thought I'd be able to rejoin my family in London, Ms. Gan abused their power again. They disregarded the court decision, and to prevent me from returning to the UK, Ms. Gan even pretended to close their London branch. They kept me in Osaka for a year, requiring that I stay at home and not report to the office. Far from my family, 
All I could do was wait. The only thing I could look forward to was a secret blog and exchanges with Seiko on SNS. But that communication also came to an end on my birthday, August 19, 2016. Most likely, our secret exchange was discovered by Chairman Kazuhide and his wife and stopped by them. I was transferred to the Tokyo office in March 2017 to work in sales. On two separate occasions during the following year, I petitioned the company's internal business ethics office regarding the chairman and his wife's violation of my human rights, but my petitions were ignored. Someone in Mitsuka must have leaked my internal petitions. Because in May 2019, I was contacted and interviewed by a leading Japanese magazine publisher. They published a four page scoop under the headline Mizukan's Acidic Family Feud. Fuji Television also took an interest in my case and reported on the situation on two separate television programs. TV viewers showed a lot of interest. One of the programs enjoyed its best ratings to date, covering the scandal on two separate days. I hoped that this coverage and the general society wide interest would lead to a resolution of the problem. On the contrary, Ms. Khan accused me of whistleblowing and retaliated decisively. え、会社との信頼関係がもうここで崩れちゃったということですよ。これがやっぱり一番大きな。ま、信頼関係、法的な話じゃなくて信頼がないからもう出てきなさいとこういう認識がそうですね。それが一番の普通解雇の理由ですよね
I haven't been able to pursue this matter further because of COVID-19. I've started to receive requests for interviews from overseas media. They're shocked by Japan's horrendous handling of the separation of children from their parents. In the UK, TV commercials for Miss Guns Browns, household names like Brownstone and Salsons sell images of family harmony. But in reality, they have separated a father from his son, and they are doing everything they can to keep us apart. More than 200 years ago, the founder of Mitsuka, Matazaemon Nakano, left a will to his successor, outlining Nakano family principles. One principle was harmony for husband and wife. A couple's good relations will enable the continuation of the family. Another principle was don't treat others poorly. If you don't treat others well, your business will fail. Based on these principles, Kazuhide Nakano's treatment of me and my son and the abuse of his authority are contrary to the teachings of Ms. Gan's founder. I hope that by having the same last name, it will help him to share a feeling of unity with me. I'm looking for any way I can to maintain a connection with him. I'll do anything to help my son to feel close to me. I've sent video letters to my son more than 50 times, and I'm telling him how much I love him. But I've received no reply, not a single note. I don't even know whether he's alive or not. It's really unbearable. In five or 10 years, even if I meet with my son, I won't be able to fully convey what happened. I want him to know that his father loves him. That is my main purpose. And I want to appeal to Kazuhide and Miwa Nakano to let me spend time with my son. Mizukan pretends to promote people's health and yet they trample on the life of an individual. It is unacceptable that they are building their continued operation on the abuse of others. These days, I find it difficult to even look at the Mitsukan product and certainly will never buy one again. My fight will not end until I've been able to regain my relationship with my son. 